Thank you, Father, for uh, your incredible grace, your incredible friendship, your fellowship, amazing plan. We just acknowledge any sins, known, unknown, and forgotten, and uh, pray you would teach us, help us to trust you, believe you, and follow along with you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, hi guys, another uh, section, little Bible class. Times are getting close to the end, as you've seen. And uh, just to uh, start with the most important thing, <clears throat> you know, we've been wondering who's this, what's the Bible, how does Revelation, where are we at in it? But the most important thing is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is it? And how do you beat it? And uh, what is it? Well, this today, <clears throat> excuse me, this popped up this morning, which brought it all together. This is a painting that sold for $93 million last night, right? And it's, as you can see, it's from, it's a picture of a skull, but it's called In This Case. That's the name of, uh, In This Case is the name of the painting. And it is from 1983, and it sold for $50 million. And if you look at it like this, you're like, well, that's, why would anybody buy that? Well, here's a better picture of it. And uh, here's a worm, right? Here's teeth. These are marks of uh, the system of Satan, right? There's the all-seeing eye, and there's a bunch of marks, some different parts and pieces that we don't even need to go into, okay? But this is a picture. In this case, this is a picture of Satan's system. These are cotton swabs that say, stick up your nose. It says... Uh, Stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils. So they stuck it up there. 1983, this is a case. Uh, you know, like if you heard the last one about the carnival, it's all a deception. It's a confidence game. First they win your confidence and then they enslave everyone, right? We're born enslaved. None righteous, no, not one. And in sin, our mother conceived us. We were brought forth in iniquity. There's none righteous. There's nothing good in us. That's in our flesh. We're born like this. This is the best that they could come up with. This is a picture of Satan and his case and his system. And we have to see this today because it's, it's quite a revelation. This is another picture. Today's just picture day. This was done a few months ago. This is by Sophia, a, a real AI. The only true AI that I know of that actually thinks has the accumulated knowledge of all history. And this is her portrait of a man. This is what it says man looks like. And as you can see, there's an eye here, an eye there. There's some animal up here. Looks sort of like a cat thing. It's got an animal spirit, an eye here. Some very uh, beautiful artwork. This is an AI. This is, it's describing what man is. And this is the best representation of what man is. See, we're all born in Satan's kingdom. We all have a demon influence that's inside of us. This is 2021, right? This is when this was made. Here's another picture. This is the first mosaic ever that anybody's ever found, okay? And you'll notice something. This picture has the same things in it. There's a little Pied Piper, as you saw last time. There's a uh, a Pied Piper, it's a Hermes, and it's got Thanatos, and it's got, uh, it's got mesmerization, but it's Hypnotos. There's Hypnotos and Thanatos, and plays a flute, and, and everybody goes to sleep. But as you see, here's a worm. Here's some excrement that's a worm. Here's a snake and a puppy. Snips and tails and puppy dog tails. Uh, snips and snails, right? Here's an eye. Here's a Here's a trident. Here's a syringe. This is over 3,000 years old. There's a crab. And this is a picture of Satan's system. This is a mosaic. It's the oldest known mosaic as far as I know. And uh, I've, I got this a few months ago. Notice the similarities. This is a much better picture, <laughs> but that is very similar, right? It's, it's very similar to the picture we just saw here right? 
It, it has the same, there's a worm, and there's all kinds of different parts to it, and another eye. There's that all-seeing eye in the center, right? It's the same picture, 3,000 years ago to now. And there's something very interesting, is that um, today, and most of you that have been here a long time, uh, you understand life. Right, you've learned to believe in Jesus. If you haven't believed in Jesus, well, it's time to do it. If you don't believe in Jesus, that's the best they can come up with. Is it's called preoccupation with yourself and others. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan is a creation. He's a cherub, and the first thing that he he was made beautiful. He was perfect in wisdom and beauty, and it says in the Bible that his beauty and his wisdom caused him to stumble. How? How did he stumble? Well, he became preoccupied with himself and others. God, he wanted, and the other angels. He, he only was thinking about, he didn't have this or that. That's how we're born. Every single person is born with that. That's part of our, we're born in sin. So you're automatically preoccupied with yourself and others. For deep thinkers, you'll have to go meditate on that, but that's true. You're only thinking about others and yourself and what you have, what they don't have. You're comparing yourself with others. As soon as that happens, you are God. That's the iniquity that was found in Satan. As soon as he was preoccupied with himself, he was God because then he's taking the place of God. When you that's the knowledge of good and evil. When you're preoccupied with yourself, others, things, circumstances, people, nations, sickness, uh, food, anything. When you determine what you choose for it to be good or bad, you're God. God said all the trees are good, except one, that one, preoccupation with yourself and others. That's how we start. And the only way out of it is to believe in Jesus right? You know, there's a picture of Satan. Here's a picture of Jesus. And we don't have a glorified picture, but this is the one that shows what love is. See, this is love. This is Jesus. He, this is a lamb of God. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But he had something that we don't. And he's offering it to us. He's trying to give it to us. This is a picture of the essence of God, Okay, Jesus, as you saw him all beat up and bloody, and you know the story, right? Is that he was satisfied in himself. See, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they've always been, yes. And he's our Father. He's our Creator. It's true. And uh, he didn't need anyone. He doesn't need anything. He just wanted to share his soul, his essence with everyone. And that's all he wanted to do. But Satan wanted to do it himself. He didn't want to serve. He didn't want to be a part of God. He wanted to be separate. He was preoccupied with himself and others. Well, that's what you get. There's nothing in there. There's only ignorance and arrogance. And it's a, it's a dead rock. Okay, there's nothing in there. We'll get back to that to make sure. But as you can see here is, uh, hold on one second. I'll have to do that again. As you can see, is that here is God is sovereign, okay? He's righteous and justice. That's the foundation of his throne. That's called the motivation and his function. It's a stimulus, a response, and a result. That's how God operates. He is love. He is eternal life. He is omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He, he's all-powerful. He's immutable, unchangeable, veracity, he's truth. He's also grace. He's also mercy. He's also happiness. This is God. So God was, is totally satisfied with himself. He doesn't need an army. He could have destroyed, stopped it at any time. He could have stopped this game at any time. But he didn't because he wanted sons. But as you've heard the analogy, like the boys on Amazon, in order to have all power and sovereignty and, and all these great attributes, you've got to have a soul first. So Jesus came here to save us. He didn't come here to condemn us. This was a, God had a better plan, Adam and Eve, and he had a, he had a better plan. 
But Satan came in and took the plan, and God let him. It's a virus that he had. He wanted to be preoccupied with himself and others. So God, that's his stimulus. If God does anything else, he's not God. He has to allow it to play out. It's his responsibility. That's why he personally came and fixed it. It was finished 2,000 years ago. He doesn't need more men. <laughs> he's not a Mormon. <laughs> he's not religious at all. He's his own God, right? He's God himself is eternal. He's totally satisfied in himself. So he went to that cross. He fasted all those days to show Satan to get, make it fair, right? <laughs> and to allow him to be tested. But he was totally satisfied. While they were whipping him, while they were beating him, he was totally satisfied in himself. That's his soul. Satan does not have a soul. He has a soul, but it's only ignorant, arrogant, and preoccupied with itself and others. That's the only characteristics it has. It has superficiality. It has moral degeneracy and immoral degeneracy, but that's a creation. That'll end. Moral and immoral degeneracy is sentimentality, emotion, superficiality. It's philanthropy. It's He's only nice to people because he needs an army, right? But there is there is no virtue. There's no integrity. It's only do as you wilt. You know, the best evil people in the world, the last one was Aleister Crowley in the time of Hitler, right? He came up with it. He studied hard and he found out do as you wilt. That's the law. Do as you will. That's the law. And the... Uh, you can add another one from AA is be true to yourself. Okay. Well, in the Bible, it says, cursed is the man that trusts in man or makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. God doesn't need servants. <laughs> he needs sons. He doesn't need them. He wanted them. He just loved a man, someone to share it with. Okay. And uh, it only looks bad because Satan is the is the author of lies. He's the deceiver. He's a murderer from the beginning. He, I'm not condemning him. <laughs> I'm telling you, and you know if you've read the Bible at all, or, or you can look in yourself, if you've just believed in Jesus, you have eternal life, okay? And you can see that you're preoccupied with yourself and others. You know, you can say, well, I have a kid, and I take care of my family, and I fought for my country, and I did this, and I did that. Great. Well, it says in the Bible, and it's true, the dainty woman among you, when the pressure comes, will be greedy for her own afterbirth. It says the most refined man among you will eat his own children, because it's all good when there's when there's plenty of food around, you know, even Satan's system is set up that way. If there's plenty of food around, <laughs> then it's fine. It's like a pike fish. It's just like that. But if there's no food, they eat each other. If there's pressure in your life, you'll find out that your kid means nothing. Your dog, <laughs> your favorite pet. Uh, it's just true. We don't have virtue in ourselves. And I could go on and you'll have to pray. You'll have to figure it out yourself. It's true. There's only preoccupation with yourself, ignorance and arrogance. And you can write it down. Do as you will. <laughs> Do as you want. That's the law. And be true to yourself. Well, yourself is wicked. It says that there, our self is wicked. It's worthless. There's nothing good in it. It's evil itself. It's a, the poison of asps is under our tongue. There's none righteous, not one. It's true. We have no virtue. It's all superficial. On the outside, it looks good. That's what's been going on. It's all on the outside, what it appears to be. But inside, there's nothing, okay? In Jesus, his outside looks horrible. In fact, the tabernacle was just animal skins on the outside, but inside was gold and diamonds and beauty. That's what he is inside. He allowed his outside to be ridiculed, rejected. It says he thought little of the shame for the love that was set before him, his own virtue inside. And, of course, us, but he, he was satisfied in himself without us. He did that because that's who he is. He came here because that's who he is. That's what virtue is. It lays down its life 
for its creation. You know, we're going to see something here. It shows uh, what we are. This is the, the second to the last thing that he said on the cross. He said, forgive them, they know not what they do. But it comes from this verse in Psalm 82. It says, they do not know, nor do they understand that they walk about in darkness. That's all of us. There's a veil over our eyes and there's a veil over the world. And this is, it is completely and utterly fake. It's only designed to Satan to try to prove and to exalt himself to the stars, to be like God. That's the Tower of Babel. And uh, that's just a fact. Everybody should know this already. But here's what God said. Forgive them. They don't know, nor do they understand. That's why he did that. And the thief on the cross, there's two thieves, right? One says, remember me after all that. Hey, today you're going to be with me in paradise. That's who he is. There was no requirement. He didn't get baptized. He didn't speak Jesus with his mouth. He didn't do anything but just believe. <laughs> and that's all you have to do. Satan is a propaganda artist. And he's tricked everyone. We're all born tricked. Okay, but this had to play out. Jesus said, forgive him. Well, there's another guy on the other side that's nailed to the cross, and he's a guilty person, and, and he won't believe. <laughs> he just, that's amazing. And But that's free will. He gives us a choice. He's going to put us all the way there. He'll put you all the way there in the hopes that you would be the one that says, hey, I believe. <laughs> That's it. And he'll try and try, but some people refuse. They just are to their own self be true. To the point of death with no virtue and hating everyone they know, including everyone, right? And they're only preoccupied with themselves and others. That's a fact. This is math. This has nothing to do with a religion or a race or a creed or a color or male, female, Jew, Gentile. This is what's in everyone. Whether you admit it or not, it's still there and you're going to find out because he's going to come. And then the pressure is going to hit and you will find out that that's all that's in there. They say hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. They hide under rocks because they know there's nothing in there. They have no courage. There's no virtue. Okay. And it's just a fact. See, all the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, God says, I said, you are gods. See, we were all created by God. Even the genetic modifications of Satan, it's still life comes from God. And you're his son. Everyone's his son and his daughter. Every single person who's ever been made, it originated from Adam and Eve. It really did. And we're gods. You know, Scientology might have had it right. You just forgot. <laughs> and about that's about all they got, <laughs> is that you forgot. You thought you were a human. He said you're gods, and all of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men. That's it. And all, and fall like any one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for it is you who possesses all the nations. This is a fact. We're not God by ourselves. Satan's not God. He's a cherubim. We've been tricked into thinking that we're God. Every single person is God of their own life. It's not. It's totally a trick. And it's not going to work out like that. It, it, there's no virtue inside. We have no goodness. It says that the the wicked are like the tossing of shit and excrement and trash and mud. There's no peace for the wicked. There's no peace. It can't rest. It doesn't have anything but superficiality. It's true, okay? So when we believe in Jesus, then he imputes his life to us. We're all born sinners, None righteous, no, not one. But when we hear the gospel, or you saw a picture, uh, you're given his life. And inside are these things. And uh, they grow. It's the smallest seed. And as you take in the truth, you acknowledge your sins, right? That's just part of eating. When you wash your hands before you eat. In God's reality, you just acknowledge your sins. You start reading the word. And that small seed starts to grow. It's a system of thinking and virtue that's developed. And it grows into a larger tree than all the other plants. So it knocks out all the other systems of thinking, superficiality, moral or immoral degeneracy. That's all you have here. Uh, earlier, there was two sides, right? There's the Republican, the Democrat. 
Democrats are the immoral degenerates and the Republicans are the moral degenerates. And then he got a bunch of Pontius Pilots in the middle that are going to wash their hands of it, which is still choosing. No choice is still a choice. You have to choose in Jesus unless you're God, unless you can create your own universe. Because Satan, is he already lost 2,000 years ago. And, and if you look, there's nothing in there. There's only ignorance, arrogance, preoccupation with self and others. Those are the only virtues that I can find. And I've been doing this a long time. There's no virtue in there. Nothing. And so every one of his children is that. And then he takes you, he takes you over. It's like a billion armed monster. And you're doing what you will, but it's not. It's his will in you. <laughs> it's his thought. And it's only evil. It's only hatred. It's only revenge. It's only bitterness. It's only survival of the fittest. There's nothing of anything good. It's just true. It's just math. This is a computer. That's a light bulb, right? That's a person. This is what this is about today, right? And so anyway, he is grace. He is mercy. He is love. We have a picture of it. And you also have a picture now as a by coincidence, which there isn't one, is this is a picture of Satan. It's called the case. <laughs> this is the case. That's why it sold for $98 million. This is Satan's system. He's very proud of his picture. And it shows the worm going inside, right? We've talked about worms before. That's what it's all about. We're born with the demon influence. And that demon influence is pictured as a worm. And it goes inside. Sometimes it helps. If you watch, there's a great movie, The Breach. It just came out with... Uh... Bruce Willis. Yeah, Bruce Willis. Thank you, Bridget. Bruce Willis, right? And it's a somewhat corny, but it's exactly it. They didn't create a new creation. They brought back the old one that only hates. And it went into everybody and, uh, yep, you know the rest. <laughs> it's the same movie over and over. This has happened for thousands of years. And God has just allowed it to play out because he want, wanted many sons. And he wanted all the sons to see. Instead of telling them, hey, that's bad, you had to see it for yourself. It's sort of like the Wizard of Oz. You know, why didn't you tell me I had to click my heels three times? Well, you had to learn it for yourself. It does have to be realized. This is just a shortcut because I got to realize it from 30 years plus of reading and studying and then learning and all kinds of stuff. But it's true, okay? Here's a bunch of characteristics that we will have. Righteousness, justice, you can have them right now. Love, self-sacrifice, you can have eternal life. You can have truth, unchangeableness. You can have this as it's built up in you. You have a soul. He said, clean the inside of the cup through thinking with his thoughts. They were mentioning fasting for tomorrow. There's a group fasting. There's a group on a dead party. Tomorrow's like a special day again. Beats me. Uh, but fasting in the Bible in Isaiah says, Quit pointing your finger at other people and condemning everyone. That's it. That's fasting. Cease from the pointing of finger and the arrogant look and the preoccupation with yourself and others. And rest, the Sabbath means to cease from your own thoughts, your own plans, and your own desires. My people walk in a way which is not good following their own thoughts. They're Satan's. They're not yours. All that you've ever created and done has been Satan. And we, you could already figure it out yourself later. I, there's a thousand other reasons and to explain that, but you'll have to figure it out. What we're talking about today is two people. Jesus, God, God the Father, God the Son is one, right? And uh, the Holy Spirit. And then you have Satan. And everybody's in this game. And you choose either for Satan or you choose for Jesus. Choosing for yourself is choosing for Satan. You're not going to be good without God. There's, that's what their little chant is. Look, is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? No one can do that without virtue. And he didn't do it to prove it to anybody. He did it because that's who he is. You're his family came to rescue you. That's what he does. <laughs> That's who he is. And he was totally satisfied. And a lot of people will not accept the rescue. 
They won't accept it. See, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life. There's a condition to this. And uh, you don't get to wash your hands. See, God the Father planned this. God the Son executed it. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of it. And it looked like he lost from the beginning. He's always been winning from the beginning. We just have to go through suffering in this life to build up the nature. And uh, some people chose to go through the fire and, and become this. There's certain people that just come out like this. I saw this this morning out in front of my hotel. There's a volcanic metal rock, right? And it's worthless. Yeah, you went through the fire, you suffered, and what'd you get for it? Nothing. Preoccupation with yourself and others, that's not going to heaven, right? There's nothing there. When you go through the fire with Jesus, you get a soul. See, my soul is completely satisfied. Don't need anything. Air, water, food, compassion. I don't need friendship. Because when you go with Jesus, you're alone, right? But I'm totally satisfied in God. He's our Father. He made us. And I can be separate You'll never be separate from God, but I can be alone and not be lonely because that virtue, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, mercy, gentleness is here. The only reason I'm doing this is because that's what I do. I'm laying down my life to tell you a message instead of charging you for it, right? Hey, let's charge some money. I have the answer. Uh, no. He said, freely you receive, freely you give, right? That's what he did. He was rich, yet he became poor for our sake. He became a man. And he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Just believing. Anybody just has to believe Jesus was the God man. You have eternal life. You are saved. The next part is to acknowledge your sins and start reading because it's spirit and truth. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And we sin constantly, but it doesn't matter. Sin was done away with on the cross. You just have to go through the procedure. Just like in the Old Testament, they washed their hands before they went in the temple. You acknowledge your sins. And throughout the day, if you have a problem, you acknowledge your sin. You quote a verse, since God is for you, who could be against you? Since God did not spare his only son, gave him up for us all, how will he not with him freely give us all things? You have something you can depend on. He will not lie to you. Everything else will. We've lied, to, if you're honest, we've lied to every single person we've ever known, including ourself. And you're going to trust that? See, that's true. So please don't miss it right? This is, his, his wrath is not expired, but his hand is still stretched out. And as you can see, uh, it's really rolling here. Uh, this is a picture, again, this is a picture I showed a while back. See, there's a serpent, two serpents with a beast on top, right? These people are here in Hades. This guy's called Hermes, and they were deceived uh, by Hypnos and Thanatos sleeping the sleep of death. And they were hypnotized by thinking that they were good in themselves. They put their hope in their health, in their family, in their nation, in their food, in their whatever. And they wanted to protect it. So they believed in this beast. And this is where it got them. This is just a, this is thousands of years old. I didn't count. Oh, 1890. Eight, uh, not that old, but, but it's about something that's thousands if years old. This has happened. I've got other pictures that go back 6,000 years, right? And where does it end you? Right now, as you're seeing, it's on the news. And uh, our battle is in flesh and blood, but he's a representation of that same person. They took five viruses together and infected everybody on purpose to get rid of the population so they could be in charge. It's a fact. It's on national news. I've said it for years, you know, since the beginning. This guy is Hermes. It's the same game that's been playing many times. And hey, don't be mad at him. Forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing because he just fulfilled the principle to the maximum preoccupation with himself and others. Billions of people have done it. Our battle is not flesh and blood. It's Satan and the demons. There's a way out. Believe in Jesus. If you start crucifying that guy or those people, or they're really wrong, 
Right, they're really wrong. Uh, they can believe in Jesus. We're all really wrong. There's none righteous, no, not one. And uh, they will, everybody's going to pay the penalty. If you accept Jesus, though, uh, he already paid it for us. Even his, everybody's. And that's just a fact. We've all been tricked. It's it, because of ourselves. We've all tricked ourselves. It's called deceiving and being deceived. Here's another great picture, right? Here's the best that it can be. This is on, uh, she was on uh, Saturday Night Live. Miley Cyrus and Jennifer Lopez promoting the vaccine. They don't know that. Before anybody goes to get arms up or get mad, she's deceived. There's the ex. She's the ex, Ben, right? It's the same game over and over again. You saw the exes were a mark. We're marked because we think we can be God apart from God. We're going to trick God out of his out of who and what he is. We're going to be ourselves. Well, as you notice, everybody has the same ex. Uh, you know, it's in the restrooms. You know, back in the day, people used to worship human phalluses, right? Penises and so on. And uh, when I was working years ago, I used to see them written all over the toilets. Inside, and I go, wow, these guys must read the Bible <laughs> because no, they don't read the Bible. It's the same thoughts that have been in our head for thousands of years. They're Satan's. In order to get some new thoughts, you have to have a new nature. And just briefly, it says this in the Bible, of course. It says you're a new creation in Christ. First, it says, before I go any further, I want you to notice an important part. A new creature is in Christ. You don't have a new creature first. And no matter what genetic modification, what you've been tricked with, you're still an old sin nature. And that sin nature only ends in two places. Four, because there's like a, just like the northeast, southwest, a weather vane. You're either a rat, you're a bully, preoccupation with self and others. You want to be God or you just want to be abused, transgender or, and so on. People want to be abused or used, right? That's all we got. We want to be abused or used. We're a pitcher or a catcher, a rat and a bully. We're preoccupied with ourself and others. That's the best you can come up with. Oh, that's it. That's everybody on the planet. And everybody has the images and the marks and the, the signs of Satan. It's all been Satan. It's 6,000 years. You can see the same game is played out every time. When you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Moment you believe, boom. If you're a believer and you didn't know this, acknowledge your sins, start reading. Everything changes immediately. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you don't eat for a week, that's not going to do anything. You need to not criticize people for a week and read and be occupied with the word and you'll see you're going to start building a nature inside. And then if you want to be humble and God leads you, yeah, give up whatever because you can control it then. It, the flesh profits nothing. This is all creation. The creation has an end. That's why good and evil has an end. You've seen it to the maximum. We see it on the news. It's called moral and immoral degeneracy. There's an end. There's no end to God's nature. It continues forever. And here is where it ends up if you stay in the sin nature. That's worshiping the beast. You don't have to do anything. You just didn't have to believe in Jesus. It says, those that believe in the Son are not condemned. But he that does not believe in the Son is condemned already because he hasn't believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The only thing you have to do to go to Hades in the lake of fire is just not believe in Jesus. That's all. No matter what you did, how nice you thought you were, what you did, you paid your taxes, you died, you were in the military, I don't care, you gave your money, you were a hospital worker, and you worked every day for free. It says if you give your body to be burned, and you give all your money away, and you don't have love, you don't have his virtue, there is no love apart from God. And you have to believe in him first to get it. The love of God is poured in our, into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. See, there's kids there, babies. Uh, it's true. It isn't like this is new. It's happened over and over again. It's over and over again. This is goes back 6,000 years. Same game. When Cain and Abel 
Abel was righteous. He offered up the lamb that represented Jesus. He believed in Jesus that he was going to come. Cain made a vegetable garden. He offered the best he could produce. He could be like the best athlete. He could be like he did great stuff and he was a hospital worker and he, he worked for his country and he offered that up to God. It was rejected because it's in the flesh. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It will not inherit a new universe. That was all a trick. And of course, you got to know it now. And even if you could go to a new universe and all you are is a rat and a bully and you want to be abused or used, oh, or abused, right? That's all there is. Think about it. It's absolutely true. There's That's the whole point of this. So anyway, um, I think you get it. There's some pictures. That's the point. Either you are going to be this, and there's your case. That's the best. That's today. That happened last night. $98 million. Why? Because that same system, there's an eye, the all-seeing eye. This is, uh, at least 3,000 years ago, same eye. Same syringes, <laughs> same stuff coming up out of your ass, same worms going in your eye. This is Satan's world. Satan was given the world. He's called the prince of the power of the air. He controls everything, except God is behind the scenes controlling history for people who believe. And he's working it out so that all people can be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but all would change their mind and believe in him. That's it. All you have to do is believe that he died for your sins, that you're a sinner. There's three things we have in ourselves, if you're honest, in your soul. One, you know you're not perfect. Two, <laughs> that there's judgment for that. And uh, three, that you need deliverance from not being perfect. And you need a savior. Well, there's only one. No one else rose from the dead. No one else came here and was judged for us. And uh, it's amazing that people aren't going to just believe in him. All you have to do is believe that he did that for you, that you're a sinner, unworthy. There's judgment if you don't, right? And you need a savior. It's pretty simple. It is simple. It must be quite a deception, right? I wouldn't put that on uh, my carpet. <laughs> I wouldn't put that anywhere. That's some ugly stuff. That is the most exalted thing as of last night, right? The second most expensive work, don't care what the first one was. This is what we become. It's not a maybe. It's thousands of years. This is what the most advanced technology, an actual AI, the only one I know of that has the vast accumulated knowledge of all of humanity. This is what it says we look like. And it's absolutely right on point. They're because we all have a demon influence. And uh, unless you get rid of it, then you have to die. You're born that way. We're all born that way. Lady Gaga was right. We're all born this way. It requires a new birth. In order to go to heaven, you got to be born again, right? That's, that's what it says. Well, here's what it also says. This is a great day. This is called the great day of the Lord. This is Malachi 4.1. For behold, the day is coming. It's burning like a furnace. And all the arrogant who won't believe and every evildoer who stays in that condition will be chaff. Chaff is just the refuse of the wheat. It's blown away. It's true. And the day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that there it will leave them neither root or branch. It's just a dead rock, burned up. But for you who fear my name, who believed in him, that's all. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. Now, that sounds fun to me, right? There's your choice. You can be ablaze because you're God and you won't believe and accept the free gift of salvation or you can believe and, and skip like a calf from the stall. We're going to have a new body. And we'll have a perfect nature that won't be able to sin anymore. You're going to have family, friends, fun like you can't believe. And you will never be able to stumble. Because you're going to have a perfect body and a perfect nature. That's the point. This is just class. This is level one class. The whole earth, all of us are going through birth pangs. We need to build a nature <laughs> inside. And uh, if we don't go along and build it, he has to do it for us through adversity, through suffering. If you're not ready to go by putting the word in when he comes, right? 
first group gets to go, the next one has to go through the suffering part to build it up. The rest are going to die. It says it, 4-3. You will tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I'm preparing, says the Lord of hosts. It's true. And the Lord means, by the way, behold the hand, behold the nail. No one did that for us. He's our father. We're gods. But nevertheless, we're going to die like men if we don't take the deal. You know, it's like you go to, you get arrested for something, right? And they say, take the deal. Or go to trial. And you know you're guilty. You take the deal, right? You're guilty. Everybody's guilty. None righteous, not one. We're born that way. It wasn't your fault, but God's going to work it out, see, so that no one could boast before God. We're saved by grace through faith, not any works so that no one would boast. See, this is how it's done. That's all. It's so simple. How could it be so hard? Because somebody tricked us. His name is Satan. Our only enemy is Satan and the demons. There's only two people at first going like a fire, the false prophet and the beast, right? And then a thousand years, Satan has to go. There are three people. The rest don't have to go. No one has to go. Satan didn't have to go. Jesus came to save him too. He came to save his enemies. He kept going till we got to Egypt. He reached 10 then. <laughs> that was the end. Because he came, Abel cut his head off. His, uh, come on. And uh, he always hits first. He took out Eve first. Adam, right? It's just mean. It's just wrong. It's no sportsmanship. Just take advantage. Get yours. And it comes to nothing. You don't have a soul to enjoy it even if you get it. He got it. I'm sure if you interviewed him, you know, and we will, he's going to say it was not worth it. But I don't care. Okay, great. Well, have a great day with that. It says, remember the law of Moses, my servant, even the statutes and ordinances which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and smite the land with a curse. This is it. Everybody can believe and then you'll start to have real love. Superficiality will go away. Emotions and superficiality and uh, pretense and fakery and, uh, and philanthropy and all human stuff will fade away. The flesh profits nothing. If you worship creation when you're a creation, you're an idolater. That's all it means. You have to worship something that's not a creation. The only thing here not a creation is God himself. Satan is a creation. We're a creation. People are a creation. Animals, trees, plants, all creation. You worship the creator who made heaven and earth, right? Jesus Christ, who is judged for us, the only one. See, it's simple, right? And uh, if enough people do that, he won't he won't bring a curse on the land. There's still some more time left. And everybody can just believe in Jesus. You'll have eternal life. Well, Father, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing person that you are. Thank you for offering us the chance to believe in you and to share this nature that can endure the things you've endured for us. And what patience you have, not willing that any should perish, but we'd all change our mind and just believe in you. We just praise you and thank you and help us to make it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.